Want to try out SQL Server before you install it? Let's look at some easy ways to get started. Welcome to this video on working with SQL Server. My name is Kevin Fiesel. I am the proprietor of Catalyxy Services LLC, a consulting firm which specializes in work all across the data platform space, especially SQL Server. In this video, I'm going to show you a few ways to try out SQL Server with little to no commitment in terms of time or money. Then, if you like it enough, the next few videos in the series are going to show you how to install SQL Server for free. So without further ado, let's look at four ways to get started without working your fingers to the bone, clicking next, next, next on an installer. The first thing I'm going to show you may cost a bit of money, and that is using a virtual machine pre-installed with SQL Server. You can get SQL Server pre-installed in a virtual machine on AWS, in Azure, or in GCP. You might be able to swing a free trial on these services, making it free to try out for a little while. Though these trials do end, and depending on how powerful you made the machine, costs scale up pretty quickly. A quick word of warning, databases are always the most expensive cloud services. But I don't wanna to get too far into the story of SQL Server on a cloud VM. It's a viable approach for sure, but today we're talking easy, and this isn't easy enough. Option number two is to use a platform as a service database offering. In AWS, this is Relational Database Service, or RDS. In Azure, there are a few options, but the one I'm going to talk about is Azure SQL Database. Azure SQL Database is a fully managed variant of SQL Server. I have to be careful on my description, something I'm rarely if ever good at. Azure SQL Database doesn't have exactly the same functionality as any version of SQL Server, though there is a lot of overlap between the products and Microsoft tries to maintain feature parity whenever possible. Let's walk through a quick demo of setting up Azure SQL Database. In the Azure portal, I can find Azure SQL Database by typing it into the search menu and selecting SQL Databases. We can see I've created several of these already. And if I wanna create a new one, I'll select the Create button, and I have here a menu. On this menu, I have to choose a subscription and then a resource group. I could, of course, create a new resource group, but I'll stick with the one that's pre-populated here. From there, I need to choose a database name. Whatever name we choose has to be unique across the instance, and it has to follow the criteria that you can see on the screen. I'll pick a database name that does fit all of these criteria and move on. Now the server, because I've created these before, the menu will pre-populate with one of the latest ones that I created. If this is your first Azure SQL database, you'll need to create a new Azure SQL server, and then you'll be able to use that one for your database. I'm gonna skip Elastic Pool for now. We may talk about that in a future video. My workload environment, I'll say development and that presets a particular combination of compute and storage, although I can configure this however I'd like. There are a few different service tiers for Azure SQL Database. We may talk about these in a future video, but for now, for dev environments where you're just playing around, serverless is fine, but also the DTU-based model. Something like a DTU 10 is good enough for a single person to mess around with, and you can see that at that level, you're talking, oh, 15 to $30 per month in East US. If you wanna use the serverless compute tier, this makes the most sense in cases where you're only occasionally using the database. For example, if you are learning about SQL Server and you spend one hour a day working with SQL Server or two hours a day working with SQL Server, then the price of that Azure SQL database will be significantly less than if you provisioned it for 24 hours a day. It also will automatically stop after a certain amount of time, so if you forget to turn it off for a day, you don't get penalized there. So those are the options that I would probably recommend if you're just trying things out. The business critical tier is the one that you're going to want for production. And you can see business critical is significantly more expensive than some of the basic stuff that we walked through. That's because it's providing a lot more in terms of capability and in terms of response time, as well as support. So don't skimp out on the database when you're talking about production, but if you're just messing with it, like uh, this is your first database, I'd probably stick with the serverless tier or something like a standard DTU model. 
So let's choose apply. Then scrolling down a little bit more, there are some options around backup that would be interesting for a future video. For today, I'll leave it alone and then choose networking. On the networking tab, the only thing I'm going to choose is to add my current IP address. That way I could connect to the SQL database after the fact. You can do things like private endpoints. Very important if you're in a production environment or if you're in a corporate environment, but for just goofing around, not a big deal. The rest of this, because I'm in the server list here, is preset for me, so I can move on to security. And Microsoft Defender for SQL, again, good for production, good for corporate environments, not gonna be necessary for me today. Ledger, I'm gonna skip, maybe I'll rant about that some future day. Finally, we could go to additional settings and see what else is available for us. We can restore from a backup or use a sample database. I'm gonna leave this empty for now. I can set the collation and I have to choose a maintenance window when patches are allowed to be applied to that Azure SQL database. So I can create some tags if I wish to mark the instance. And then when I'm done, click create. And that's how we create an Azure SQL database. And there you have it, one SQL database available for us. We can connect to it using a variety of client tools, though that's a story for another day. Instead, let's try out the query editor in the Azure portal. This allows you to run queries against an Azure SQL database without having any special client tools installed. I happen to have a database already set up, which includes several tables. Drilling into the tables menu, I can see all of these. If I had my own views or stored procedures, they'd show up in the relevant folders. From here, I can write a query in the window on the right or select the ellipsis and grab the top thousand rows from a table. The interface certainly isn't as fully featured as some other tools we can use on a daily basis, but if you're just getting started with SQL Server and Azure SQL Database, it'll do the trick. The first two options we looked at are the ones I'd consider more vanilla. This is the normal path, but they also require some effort and possibly money. So what do we do for the broken lazy among us? Don't worry, I got you covered. Almost a decade ago, as of the time of this recording, Steve Jones at Redgate put out a free instance of Azure SQL database that anyone can use. They've included on there the AdventureWorks LT database, a scaled down version of Microsoft's flagship demo database from about 2008 until 2016. I'll use Azure Data Studio to connect to this database. First, we put in the server name. Then we change the authentication type to SQL authentication and enter SQL family as the username. The password goes next. And finally, I'll specify AdventureWorks as the database and connect. This gives us access to a completely free database that we can query to our heart's content. Granted, this assumes that your heart's content is a very scaled down Azure SQL database with read-only permissions, so don't assume you can go wild with this thing. Still, if you wanna practice writing select queries, but don't feel comfortable having SQL Server installed just yet, this is a good way to do it. The final thing I'm gonna show is SQL Fiddle, a great tool intended to make it easier to try out problems and solutions for Q&A forums like Stack Overflow. It includes support for several database platforms, though we can see that the SQL Server version is a little old at 2017. Nonetheless, the way this works is simple, as we can see by selecting the View Sample Fiddle from the top of the screen. On the left-hand side, you build your schema, perform any insert, update, or delete statements you need to, and generally get the database into the state you need it to be. Then, on the right-hand side, you write a SQL query. Generally, this is a select query intended to get the data in some appropriate shape. The table at the bottom shows you what SQL Server returned for your query. This solution is purposefully simple and enables people to put something together really quickly without touching their own installations of a database product, or even for you to try something on a different product you don't have installed. Come in with simple expectations and basic data and SQL Fiddle will almost always do the job. We just looked at four different ways to try out SQL Server without installing a product ourselves. If you just need a throwaway query result or want to try something out, SQL Fiddle is a great choice. If you're new to writing T-SQL and want to try someplace for free, Redgate's AdventureWorks LT database hits the spot. But both of these are purposefully constrained options. If you need something a little more wide open for your testing, 
Azure SQL DB or RDS is great. And if you need feature compatibility with the SQL Server Box product, you can get VMs with the product pre-installed. We'll have links and show notes in the description below. Until we see each other in the next video, take care.